Well, we've been at Bucket of Blood for the whole morning now, part of the afternoon. We've seen all the guys here. Now we're going to chat with uh, Notorious John Ritchie. Yeah. yeah. Um, son of John Hall, as we all know. John, thanks for letting us come up today. That's all right. It's, uh, it's a hardcore gym, wrestling gym. Yeah, yeah. We love our wrestling, yeah. It's based mainly on wrestling. You know, we have the boxing my time and everything else, but wrestling is the main agenda. Wrestling is the main, because yeah. obviously you've, been, you, you've come from a wrestling background, because your dad, John Hall, was a world of sport wrestler. Yeah, I grew up with it, yeah. Um, I was, like, my granddad was a boxer, my dad was a wrestler, and I grew up doing both, you know. Granddad teach me boxing, and dad teach me wrestling. When, uh, when I was about 16, something like that, yeah, 16, I didn't get into the, I, tried, I, I was trying to get in the English boxing team, but I didn't get into it. And uh, I was a bit downhearted, and uh, so my dad took me to Down Mines, the gym down there, to, you know, just to, to get a job basically and earn money out of pro wrestling. So, uh, Boxing was quite a tough sport to get into back then, yeah, there's yeah, a lot of yeah, people yeah. out there doing it, like you're in yeah. London, South London. Yeah. Where did you grow up, was it? The, uh, uh, Grove Park, Chimbrook. Um, I boxed at a Downham Community Boxing Club. Right. And the Dave Rogers and Brian White, who were fantastic trainers. You know? Did you, when you was a kid, did you go to the shows with your dad? Is that how you first yeah, started? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I'd always go. Yeah, um, I, I, I was a sort of a fan as a, as a youngster, uh, but it wasn't anything I really wanted to do. No. But uh, then, of course, uh, when I, like I say, when I got to sort of sixteen, I knew everyone. All the people I watched as a kid, like you know, Bobby Barnes, uh, John Cortez, and all these fantastic workers. Uh, I got the chance to work with, you know, when I was older, and that's what sort of drew me into it. I started doing it for money, and then started enjoying, started enjoying working the crowds and all that, and like the, the, that getting the crowd in the palm of your hand and bringing them up and down when you want type of thing. Isn't that like it? Do you think they've lost that a bit now in like American wrestling? Oh, yeah, it's, it's more. Gone, yeah, it's just, it's sort of like trying to take them up as high as you can, which normally is like the entrance, they tend to pop on the entrance more than anything. Yeah. And then, uh, then you know, it's just like a general hue. Uh, whereas, you know, they, they fear silence. You know, when we, like, see uh, Steve Gray or Johnny Saint might be having a straight wrestling match. Yeah. Uh, There'll be silence, you'll hear a word, you hear the, the old round of applause and all that, but at the end of the match, you get a, a standing ovation. Right. You know, because these people are fantastic workers. Um, now, if, if they're quite a silent, they, they start panicking and start getting on the mic. Come on, cheer! Yeah, Pat, this is that. the bad guy. This is the good guy. You know, they should be able to tell that story themselves. Or they cut it on TV. They, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Or you tricks know. cover the seats, make it <coughs> yeah. Is, that, is there really any need to do that? If you well, I think you you know right, they're not looking in the right direction. If they're having to cover it to make it look like there's more people there and all that, then there's there's something wrong with the with the entertainment itself yeah. and they, that's where they should be looking to improve you know like the, the best place for me I like the old world of sports type of wrestling but I like the, the shoot edge and the, the, the freestyle amateur type of edge to it yeah. you know, just a little bit uh, more keen if you like um, but they could look back to that watch how they work the crowd watch how they got their stories over in their matches and they would learn a lot and that would up wrestling again you know at the moment it's just taking a big tumble which is a shame your three-time, is it three-time world champion? Three-time British champion. Three-time British. Yeah, that was uh, at LDN, yeah. That was, um, you wrestled, was it 96 matches undefeated? Undefeated, that, yeah. Undefeated, was that when you had the belt, when you had the belt, uh, was that with the belt? Um, I think it was a bit of each, a bit before I had the belt, and then once we got it the first time, I think. When you, uh, when we come here today with your dad, obviously, John, when you still see him in that ring at his age, with his injuries, he's got bad knee. Yeah, it yeah. must make you think. You know, I worry sometimes. Yeah, you know, but uh, yeah. the, the, like all the lads love his knowledge. You know, he's got so much knowledge, uh, and it keeps his mind. He always says it keeps his mind active. He don't want to just, he, you know, he's not one of people could sit at home and not do anything. So he, he like, you know, he gets down to the gym in Strode and this gym and so, you know, and teaching people and constantly keeping up on things, yeah. keeps his mind ticking up, you know, so that, and that's good, you know. Yeah, the uh, Bucket of Blood was shot into the limelight last year, so to speak, because Kurt Angle come over. Yeah, we had Kurt, Kurt Angle, uh, we've had Royce Gracie, uh, he was on the one show, on the one show a couple of times, you know, so, yeah, we've been lucky, really. Because, um... About 12 years ago, before MMA really kicked off, I know Royce Gracie was coming over here for seminars and there was like five people turning up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, BJJ's took off big time, but 
you know, what, and, you know, if you say, when they come down to the studio and they say, you do BJJ, well, sometimes we do, but we don't always do it. And we say, well, no, but we do submission wrestling. Which they don't want, so, you know, what they don't realise is that it all came from submission yeah. wrestling. It all came, you know, it's where it all came from. So was it, was it, big, obviously, when Cart Angle came, it must have been like... Yeah, it was, we packed solid, you know what I mean? It was a great day, really good day. And he was a nice fella, you know, he was polite. We give him a bucket of blood sweatshirt that he stuck straight on and really? that type of thing. Yeah, and he, and he commented on what a great gym it was, you know, and, I read, which is a big thing, you know what I mean? I read that he liked the way it was, um, it, it's a proper wrestling gym. I believe yeah. that's the word to use. Yeah, yeah. It's a proper wrestling gym. Yeah. Like, in America, you've got machines and everything. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I'm not a machine, though. I, don't, no. I, don't. I think I find out a con people pay thousands in memberships to... Like leisure centres and all that, and you're going on machines that, that, that really are defining muscles. Once you've got a, once you've got a body, then you go on these machines to define little parts of your muscle. Whereas, um, you know, if you just want to build muscle to start and to and to get fit and all that, and really you should just be either doing free exercise or maybe on the, the loose weight type of thing. Do you think the Americans have made that where you've got to be this big, super strong wrestler? Because there's stories about steroids in America, drugs. Everything. Yes, it, it, I find it incredible that. People, you know, it doesn't seem to matter to the, the people that like wrestling now that they're, that they're really watching a drug addict, you know, going through these motions sort of thing, you know, of, of a, you know, a staged match. You know, we never used to stage a match for a start, you know, it was, you, you had to be able to work freestyle. Yeah. Um, and, oh, the skill, I suppose. Yeah, it? and, and it was about, it's a, you know, any wrestling is about agility. You'll never find, you'll never ever find a great wrestler or even a boxer or something like that, that's, that's, that's a bodybuilder, because you can't move, you know, it's just the two don't go together. Yeah. If you train the right muscles enough, it doesn't make your muscle, it just makes your muscles strong. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a fallacy that a big muscly guy would be, would be like the expert fighter type no. thing, you know. No, it's all part of fantasy of WWE and that type of yeah. thing, I suppose. I suppose. Uh, when I spoke to your dad, I spoke about um, World of Sport, because that come off the TV about 86. Yeah, it must be, yeah. Uh, and I said, does he think that uh, a lot of that was to do with the American stuff, like really shining food? Just, he, he agreed on that. Well, no, I, I don't know. I mean, the first thing we knew really of, of American wrestling properly in this country, unless you was in the game type thing, was uh, Hulk Hogan in Rocky. Yeah. The people were like, Jesus, like, yeah, you know, yeah. the size of him and all that. And so, uh, and then I, I remember they started showing it um, on uh, DVDs and that in pubs, yeah. on the screens, when they first had the big screens. And so it started to sort of gather momentum. Of course, we had, at the time, uh, our wrestling, because it was such a, uh, a lucrative business, yeah. it was kept a very close shop. Right. So the old guys weren't training the young guys. Yeah. And so we ended up with a lot of old guys with fat bellies, yeah. rolling about on the floor that couldn't do a lot, yeah. and not too many young guys. And if you did get a young guy, of course, they'd start to go to America. Yeah. And then they start to show these big American, you know, massive crowds and all that. What's that indicate? It indicates that they're better than us, you know. So, yeah. and to be fair, at the time they was, you know, hands down. Uh, but uh, I think, I think there was a little backhander somewhere along the line, and that's why the British wrestling got took off. Because I think it could have a little bit of investment could have gone a long way. But, you, know. you do your own shows, John, as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Dropkick shows. I mean, how, how hard is that to sorting them out? Because obviously, there's a diet. The audience is as hard. To, it's hard yeah, to get it's, people. Yeah, it's hard to get a crowd, and we, you know, because we do a lot of like club shows and that, we, we, we rely heavily on sort of our, the parents, the families, friends, you know, uh, and they'll chip in a little bit to keep the club, help us keep the club going. Um, but we're starting to move out and do bigger shows now, so it's the same format, you know, a bit more advertising, um, we're just going to see how it goes type of thing, you know. Yeah. But, Hopefully we'll be all right. I think because British wrestling took quite a big slump, didn't it? Yeah, like, it's, been, it's been down and down. Do you think it's come, do you think it's starting to start to pick up? Because I've noticed a few few shows starting to appear now. Yeah, um, it depends what you call uh, a, a, a class of British wrestling. Because if we're going to say, well, you know, uh, let's, let's do it a British style, then we go back to the world of sport yeah, days. Of what we got is we haven't got really British wrestling. Shows. We've got British wrestlers doing American wrestling. Yeah. Poorly, you know, or to American be fair. On shows. Or American wrestling on British shows, yeah, which actually is getting less and less. But so you're getting the smaller names that can't, that are not really nothing in America now coming over here and, and they automatically have bigger names. You know, you've only got to put American underneath their name and it's yeah. more of sells a ticket. But you know, I, I'd like to see well, what we do here is is about home based wrestlers doing home based wrestling. 
you know, uh, a lot of our matches are still done to the rounds format. Which you know a lot of, a lot of people won't do. Oh, people don't understand. People don't, or it gets boring. It's boring, but it's only boring if you haven't got the workers that can do it. If you've got the workers that can put it over, then all of a sudden you know. When we started the last, I think something like six shows we've had, we packed, we we sold out. So you know that were it's starting. To, you know because people are going watching WWE now and then watching a the cage match you know, like, and thinking, well, how comes that tax him out? But he can stand it. Like these are, yeah, you know, and they're starting to even the ones that. Sort of semi believed it now, starting to think, you know, no good. Yeah. Uh, and then they come and see our wrestling, and they start to realise that, oh, no, this is a bit near the mark. You know, and they are, as, as the real champions, they, they, uh, they win their belts in real shoot wrestling competition, which is like submission wrestling. Um, the, only, the only difference, really, to something like BJJ, I think we don't have chokes, we don't have nothing across the throat, because we find that takes the skill out of it, because yeah. everyone's just going for the throat, for the throat, choke out, choke out. So, we take that out of it and then it's about skill, then you've really got to know about your limbs and your body and your leverages and that, that's where you're wrestling comes yeah. from, you know. So, it's like, yeah. um, your tag, you've got a tag team, Team Perfection, yeah, two yeah. big guys, yeah, two muscle guys, yeah. nice yeah. fellas. Um, obviously they said themselves they're not, they're not going to go up the top rope and start spinning off it, but the way they bring their characters across is quite arrogant to the yeah, crowd, yeah. oiling themselves, winding yeah. people up. I mean that sort of, that's that's a good quality. Yeah, that's brilliant. brilliant. You've got to have the character. Yeah, yeah. There was, we always had the character in this country. We had fantastic characters like Les Kelly, Adrian Street, Bobby Barnes. You know, these these people were fantastic. Uh, Leon Harris, fantastic characters, and they can go in like a stage actor and not only do the physical wrestling but also do this performance. Yeah. Like you know, get the crowd into the matches. Well, these two are like that. They're both amateur wrestlers. Zed's also a very classy boxer. I don't know if you see him on the bag. He can, he can really, yeah, you know, he could be a boxing champion. Uh, he's, he does the, the shoot. He does the BJJ. So they're all top class athletes, first of all. You know, and then you know they, a lot of them come to me and say, how, how, you know, what characters are we? What characters? So I go, learn your fighting first. Yeah. Learn your wrestling. Learn how to work it. And then we talk about your character, and we bring your character out of the style that you've got. Type of thing. You know, that's normally how it works with Zed and Jazz. They're big boys, so they all up like the bodybuilding thing and all that. They get girls up to all them up, and it's, it's a, I love it. I think it's hilarious. You know what it's I mean? It's a brilliant act, isn't it? Yeah. When you think they put it together from yeah, and they're from quite workers, you know. So they, they, they'll, they'll go somewhere. You know, we've got um, then we've got other characters like uh, um, Bradley Albright, who's who's uh, very submission based, uh, clean. You know, no no mucking about, no carry. It's like it's like. The fact that there's no character is his character, so he's just like in and do the business, and, and he, he's a quite fantastic wrestler. Uh, Honest Ernest Sterling's another one. Uh, Freddie Cornell. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah, got, yeah, we got, you know, we got all these different fantastic characters, ca uh, characters coming out. We've got the Tiger Kid, Humongous. You know, they're all out. If, if you come and see a show, I know you see they're all there with, with the characters and, and everything else you want. But then they could do the business. Well, I was going to say, we'd love to come to the next show. And yeah, it'd be brilliant. Be brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about your characters, because you've got uh, Notorious Notorious John yeah. Ritchie. I suppose that's your heel character, isn't well, it? Well, yeah, Notorious was um, what I used. I used to wrestle for in WA Amalok. Uh, it was uh, Andre Baker that came out of it. it was, uh, we, I used to do like, I was, as if I was still in prison, I was a prison boxing champion. And, and then someone said, yeah, you should be called Notorious, and it's all built from there. Uh, and then I do John the Dom Ritchie, which is like a gang, like basically a gangster. And I, I've got my team of bouncers. Their beatings are us. Yeah, you know, it's sort of like send contracts out on the audience. <laughs> uh, and then I've got the gentleman who's, well, someone said he's more like Dick Dastardly. If you remember Dick Dastardly, yeah. wacky races, yeah. then you know, the boob and moustache and you know, so like, I, yeah, it started. I, I always found my characters with a hat. You know, if I walk in the second hand shop, that was what happened with, with Gentleman John. I walked in, it was a top hat, and it was only two quid, so I thought, I'll have that. Yeah. Bought that, and, and, and I had it about two years at home, thinking, how am I going to do that? I, I didn't want to do just like, you know, it's pointless going out to be a, and saying you're a gentleman, and then that's it, it's just your entrance, then you wrestle, and there's yeah. nothing else. So I, I started playing it kind of like a, um, out of the fella out of Fagin. Uh, uh, Oliver, yeah. you know, like we're, you know, yeah, that type of thing. Like they all wear top hats and they, and, but they're all crooked and bent and like they're not quite gentlemen, not quite, you know. And every now and then I, I'd speak 
you know, I'd be all well spoken to someone say something, and I'd go, yeah, shut up, what's the matter with you, like, yeah. you know, and they go, oh, you're not posh, you know, like, and play it all on that, and, you know, and it grew and grew with LDN, you know, Sanjay Bagger put me over really well, and, uh, you know, we was on telly for two years, I was on telly every, every, every week, I think, for something like two years, you know, right. incredible coverage, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, uh, I mean, that's what it needs, again, there's a lot of channels now, John, on Sky, they're like free, free channels, and they're yeah. these sort of shows, you know, it's... Yeah. There are doors opening yeah. for this, aren't there? Yeah, it will, yeah, I can see it coming. It, 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 like, the only problem we've had in the past, really, is that, like, the channel we went on, I think it was the Fight Channel or something like that, I can't remember. Channel, yeah, 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 it was the TV Wrestle yeah. Channel and they sold the Fight Channel. Yeah. Well, the TV Wrestle Channel had been slaughtered by promotions for, like, I don't know, five or six years before that, yeah. and we just got in, basically, I think they'd already made the decision to sell out. But we was very successful now, yeah. and it was a shame. And they sold it to um, the fight fight channel, and I think they went skin at, at, after it was sold. So I think so it just fell through, which is a shame because it was becoming a success. You know, it was great rebuilding. You know, we started bringing in the old rest like Johnny Kidd, Johnny Saint, yeah. Steve Grove. We started having them back on the shows and Brookside, that. Bobby Brookside. Yeah, Brookside was on there. So you know, it did start to grow, but uh, and then it got presumpt again. What's your sort of, because your dad's still, like I said earlier, still gets in the training. Do you think you're going to be the same like your dad's still? Yeah, yeah, I'll do the I'm on the mat seven days a week type of thing. I love shooting, I love submission wrestling. I love boxing, I still box. So I don't know, I don't know what I'd do if I had to stop, to be honest. And you did, you did tell me earlier that you rec- when Kurt Angle came in, you reckon you could have took him? I could have took him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, I could have took him. And the future. I think he knew it as well. I could yeah, see yeah. fear in his eyes. Did he do any wrestling <laughs> when he was here? No, we offered. But uh, he said he'd had a workout that morning. Do you reckon it's because he saw, looked into your eyes and thought, no. Yeah, he, oh, I, I could see the fear. Like I could see the fear. He saw the notorious and not the gentleman. Yeah. And the future, John. The future, are you going to keep going with these shows? Keep the gym? Yeah, I'll, going, you know, that's yeah. the idea, that's the plan. A lot of growing, you know, it's pointless if we're not going to grow. Yeah. Oh. Obviously, we can't just sit and stagnate. Even if it's paying for the club, we can't sit and stagnate. We've either got to grow or go type thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll grow. People like yourself are going to keep British wrestling. You're going to keep doing your gym, keep doing the shows, and just keep going yeah. like you have and, done and, for. And some of the people that I've got that are, that are actually learning with me now, they're, you know, they're, they've got that same frame of mind and they've, le- they've learned exactly the same way I've learned. So they'll pass that on. And I, you yeah. know, so if I'm like, yeah, I've got Luke that stays here. Uh, Little Danny Hills a stay, you know. Yeah. So, uh, and they they'll pass on the same messages. Quite you know? impressed with little Freddie as well. Yeah, Freddie cool now. Yeah, good little shout out. He knows all the old wrestlers yeah. and everything. He you know? came from an old uh, gym. I won't mention the name. But he came from a gym and uh, he, you know the trainers have basically cracked on. Been there four years and basically he learned nothing. So I stripped everything off of him, put him in the amateurs, the freestyles. He started yeah. to learn that and he won a title in that. Then I put him into submission, started to learn that, and now he's our lightweight and weight champion. Yeah. He won both, both open competitions after like seven fights as well. Um, and then from that, I just said, right now, what you do there, lighten it up and work it in the ring. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he could wrestle yeah. and put a character on it because he was one of my sort of bouncers, like in beatings or us. Yeah, I heard that. And then it all came about, you know. So, so that's brilliant. About training, John, because I hear a lot about. Um, Obviously, your gym's really well known. Kurt Angle's been here, but I hear about a lot of gyms that are, you know get a lot of injuries. Now, this is something that's a problem because they get they're starting out, they're getting injured very early, probably getting put off wrestling. Is, do you think there's a lot of gyms that are opening up just to make money nowadays? Like yeah, wrestlers? yeah. A big, like I've had, I've actually had people here that might train me at six months. Next thing you know, oh, I'm starting up a club, and I'm like, what? You, you, you don't even know how to do a single leg, yeah. and a double leg, or, and, and they do, and they get a bit of money or daddy or whatever, and they go and do it. And there's thousands about it, and uh, that, that's sad, you know, because someone will get. Uh, there was a, a kid, Nicky Barley. Uh, I think I was telling you about earlier. He, um, they tried a move that they hadn't practiced, hadn't done properly. Tried this move, he ended up with a broken neck, and he's paralysed from the neck down. He's 19 years old. Now that is scary, yeah, and, and you know it's a simple fact. If you learn how to do a throw correctly, learn it the real way, yeah. you'll, be, you'll learn how to do it properly and safely. Yeah. And that's that's the the thing is the safeness, the strength. It's no good, you know. Like you might be able to lift weights, you might be able to pump like 100 kilos above your head, but when it comes to holding the body as it goes over, it's a different game. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, and this is where a lot of the accidents happen. Then, you know, they, they might 
in the gym to get up on a rope and do a perfect moonsault onto a crash mat. Oh yeah, so I'll do that on the show, I'll do that on the show. Instead of like practicing it a thousand times first, I do it. And, and that's where you get, you know, they sit. there was one kid, uh, I think it was an LDN show, and I think it's called the, the Swan Tong or something like that, they do where they... Swan Tong Bomb? Yeah, 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 and he's done that and come down on his neck. He was so lucky, he was paralysed for about 20 minutes, couldn't move. And they cut his boots off and all that, and we thought, he's, you know, he's, he's had it type of thing. Uh, but he was like he recovered, but you know, it just goes to show you don't, you know, you've got to pro I always say, like, never try anything first time in the ring at a show. No. Always practice it, practice it, practice it. You know, in all wrestling, any, any combat sport, you know, because all pro wrestling really is, is our, is like a cat, like in karate, you, you learn how to fight, but you do cats. Yeah. Really, pro wrestling is a cat, it's the theory of wrestling. Yeah. Uh, so you're going through the motions lightly. Uh, you know, if, if, if they learn to do that correctly, then they'll be safe. And it's all about repetition, repetition, repetition. You know, any, any combat sport, you keep doing it. You know, you don't sort of go on a punch bag and go, oh, I can do a jab now, I won't need to do that no more. You're constantly on it, jab, 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 for years and years and years. And it's the same as, you know, taking a lot of people, oh, yeah, I've done loads of shooting. And I go, oh, have you like ammo? And you go, oh, I've been doing it about six months. You're baby then, you know, because you've got to do it years and years and years, and you can get better. More mature, I got better and better and better the older I got. The carrying on learning, the, carrying, the theory of it, the, the, the leverages, the, and all the different things, and that's, and that's what it's all about, you know. So, if someone's going to join a wrestling club, how, how do they know? How can they check that this wrestling club's got all the prop, you know, the experience? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a good, a good example, a good thing, but, uh, well, if they, you can, on the uh, British Amateur Wrestling Association, uh, you, you can find clubs through them. And there'll be and the clubs that they recommend will be uh, qualified coaches that are trained and been and been taught by uh, by these people, uh, and and they'll have the certificates to prove it type of thing, you know. Um, the other way is you, like be progress, and you can you can go by people's records, ask around. Uh, you know, if you can, ask someone that's wrestled these people, see what they think, you know. You, but it's, it's an hard, it's an hard decision to make, you know. If, if I, I wouldn't want to send markets to most pro wrestling clubs at the moment, you know, there's a couple that I would send them to, there's one in Norwich, uh, Ricky Knight, uh, I think it's WAW, you know, they've got a lot of experience, um, you know, they're very, you know, that, that, well, Robbie Brookside's got a club, I think, in Leicester, yeah. that'd, be, that'd be good one to learn, but, but so there's not, not past that, like, yeah, I can't, <laughs> yeah, it's I the same in MMA, they're opening Someone's doing MMA, having one amateur fight, yeah. and they think they can. Exactly, yeah. They, they think, think they can teach you yeah. well, but, but it's, it's done nothing, yeah. does it? Yeah, you know, we, like, so we used to do shoot fights, I think, like, it's like a bit of boxing and wrestling, we didn't have the kicks in it. But you had to go around the gyms then to find it, you know. But I, I've done it, I've done it all my life, I've done it basically from when I was about five years old, you know. And I'll have someone come in that, that, that's had one match trained for about a week, you know, or a year or whatever, and they're trying to tell you how you should be doing things. Like, oh, I'll just, I'll just. It makes me laugh. I've learned how to just ignore it and take a note of them. But it used to sort of annoy me at first because, you know, unless, unless you get it right from the beginning, you can muck someone's career up. Yeah. You know, and, 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 that's, and that's a shame because, you know, you, 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 might have a fight, you might have had a champion on your hands, you know, and then someone mucks it up, you know. If, you know, you can look at um, Amir Khan. Amir Khan never seems to have got out of that habit of being an amateur where he just sort of trundles into punches. He never got that slip, you know, because... Basically, although he was taught well as an amateur, he won a gold medal, he, he, he wasn't trained in the correct way to go on to be a professional. He was trained to win a gold medal and he can't get out of habit now, you know. And it's, you know the Americans are trained a boxer to, to, to be a champion in years to come. Yeah. You know, and they learn to slip punch, they learn to do these type of things, you know. Well, the last thing I've got to mention, obviously, is that you've got a couple of Wade Barrett, who's yeah, in yeah. WWE, yeah, yeah. he's been trained by you, and your dad as well, is that right? Yeah, Barrett? yeah, yeah, yeah. And Magnus? Magnus, and yeah. What's the other Marty one? School, uh, Marty School's on TNA, I think. Um, uh, Robert Rose, is another big name, he, he was their trainer at the Samoans. We've got... Or Birchall, something to do with you, uh, Birchall, yeah, that was in the early days. I think that, that might be under Frank Reimer. Right, okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, Kat, she's, I forget what you said, she's Winter now. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, we, we, we used to train her down at uh, NWA at Amalok. Um, so you've, uh, you've, 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 a lot of people have come. I mean, obviously, it's, people see the names that have come out, have been trained by you, your dad as, as well. 
they, everyone can tell this 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 is this is the place. If someone yeah, lives yeah. near Essex or London or anywhere and they yeah, want to learn wrestling, come, here, yeah. come to Bucket of Blood. Yeah. And it's not as actually brutal as it sounds, is it? No, Bucket no, of Blood. No, no. James Fig uh, had a had a, 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 had a was the first world champion. James Fig was the first sort of official world champion at Bare Fist Boxing, and he had, he had a gym above a pub in East London, and uh, it was a nickname. That's the bucket of blood, you know, you'll sweat a bucket of blood in there, you get in there type of thing. Well, James Fig then tra then trained uh, Johnny Jack Broughton. Uh, Jack Broughton then went on to be another world champion and he sort of invented the use of gloves in matches, etc. He owned the gym and in honour of James Fig, called it the bucket of blood. And that's basically where I took it from type of thing, you know. Not Rocky, as some people think. <laughs> right, Tom, I can't thank you enough for letting us right, come back tonight. It's been a pleasure to make this. It's been a pleasure, obviously, to meet your dad as well. Um, and hopefully we'll come to your next show. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'll, if, if there's wait. one soon in the seventh, I'll let you know. Yeah, no, we'll see you at the uh, World of Sport anyway. You're yeah. going to oh, the yeah, reunion. the reunion. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll yeah. All right, John. cool. Nice one. Thanks Thank very much. Thank you. Thank you.